Hi guys, so <laughs> my name's Tracy Hines, for any of you that don't know me. I am a cosplayer, obviously, and primarily I'm a singer, and I do a lot of voice acting as well. Um, I'm not any like particular character, I just do a lot of like commercials and um, apps and stuff like that. Uh, and I've been cosplaying since, oh my gosh, kind of forever. <laughs> since I was a little kid, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't really know when it officially went from like, I love costumes to cosplay, but maybe when I was about 15 and I found out that anime conventions were a thing and cosplay was a thing and I became crazy obsessed with Sailor Moon, which inspired <laughs> my first anime cosplay. So I think, yeah, I feel like I've been cosplaying since I was about 15. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of costuming and um, everything that kind of comes along with portraying a character. Um, my main sort of thing that I, I do all sorts of different things, um, but my main thing and my biggest passion is music. Um, and I use cosplay a lot to make music videos on YouTube. And uh, my favorite thing is just kind of like taking a song and kind of putting it into my own style. I do a lot of Disney covers and um, covers of like fandom IP stuff. And I have original music too, but um, I do a lot of covers and I love sort of reinterpreting something uh, in my own voice and taking a character and making that character my own and just doing the best job I can to bring a little bit of myself to it and put my own spin on it, but also have it be as like film quality and epic as possible. Um, and another thing I love to do with cosplay is my kind of, uh, my favorite type of cosplay is taking a character and trying to translate them into sort of what they would look like in real life. Um, I love seeing like epic anime cosplays where everything is like exactly, you know, like, you know, exactly like the character. Um, that's amazing. My sort of thing is more reinterpreting it and um, just kind of adding textures and maybe if it's like a Disney princess or something, taking the gown and imagining what it might be like if it was a historical, costume from the time period maybe that they're from. So um, I have a lot of fun with that. I love to collaborate with people and uh, I'm unique as a cosplayer. I think in that number one, it's kind of all towards music, which is fun. And um, I don't actually sew super well. <laughs> so I am one of those make it work. Um, I love doing detail work. I do a lot of hand sewing and stuff, but I typically will collaborate with one or many, depending on the costume, um, designers or seamstresses um, and basically build the costume with them from the ground up. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I love. And obviously today I'm, I'm Jesse from Team Rocket, but this was, you know, I, I had to Things happened. <laughs> My top didn't quite fit, so I, I had to make this last night. But we did it. We did it. And it's super sparkly, right? <laughs> so um, so this is essentially a Q&A panel. And uh, I just love, I'm very casual. I love just chit-chatting. Um, so like, feel free, you know. And uh, just any questions that you guys might have, I would love to do my best to answer them. And obviously, I'm just coming from my own personal um, experience, and I don't think that I know the right way to do anything. I just have a huge passion for what I do, and um, I just love sharing it and being a part of the community because I feel like we just have, as cosplayers, we have an amazing community and like so many epic niche communities within that. Um, and so I just really enjoy uh, being able to connect with people um, and get excited about the fandoms that we love. So. Uh, yeah, feel free if any of you guys have questions. I think we've got a mic. Is it over here? You've got it right there. Sweet. So we got a mic. You're going to walk around. Does anyone have a question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be shy. <laughs> Anything you want. And, and you can ask me about cosplay. You can ask me about like other stuff. I'm very open. <laughs> right over here. She'll walk it over to you. <laughs> Is it working? Oh, is this thing on? <laughs> How's it going? Uh, good. Awesome. So uh, I have tried wearing wigs for cosplays, and it's a pain in the butt. Um, and I've tried securing it a couple different ways um, with like, bobby lot. pins all around the side. Yes. And every anything I do, I always end up with like a sore scalp. I feel like my hair is gonna fall out. Same. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some 
tricks I've picked up. But yeah, is that are you trying to like fight that sore scalp with heavy wigs? Yeah, and stuff? I don't want to lose my hair. <laughs> but I'd love to wear wigs all the time. That'd be cool. It can, yeah. Wigs are amazing. Wigs are my favorite thing. It can happen. You can actually get. Uh, damage to your scalp, and uh, I would know because it's happened to me, ah. and I have some friends that it's happened to as well, um, and a lot of people who wear wigs for their jobs, like, uh, I, I think a lot of people who are friends at Disneyland, they will have, I've heard of people having kind of issues too, because you're wearing it so much, right. and it's heavy, and it's pulling, so um, I've tried all different methods, I have a lot of friends that swear by the, like, pin curl method, so they take, you know, yeah, it's, right. I personally don't do that, because I'm lazy, and <laughs> um, basically what I do, right now I have extensions in. Usually I have pretty um, oh. fine hair, so it's not a huge deal to like get it all up in a wig cap. Right now I have these epic, like, like thick, huge extensions in that my friend gave me, and so getting my hair under a wig is really difficult. Um, so I tend to do two French braids, um, and then sometimes, like right now, what I like to do is four. So, like in the back, I won't French braid it because, again, I'm lazy. But I do two French braids here, so you've got a little strength right. right here with the braid. And then once you've got your braids, I wrap it around my head as tight as possible and pin it as flat as possible. It's like a system. So then you've got all your, your hairs up, spray away the flyaways. Um, and then I put on my wig cap. I pull it back like a little bit, so you've got a little bit of your hair showing just so everything looks natural when the wig goes on. And then, so I learned this from a wig stylist friend of mine who uses wigs in the opera. So she like makes wigs for um, opera and all sorts of shows and stuff. And uh, when I had a pixie cut, I had super short hair. I was like, how's this gonna stay on my head? <laughs> and so um, she takes an ace bandage and you have to be really careful. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. You can't wrap it too tight because you can hurt yourself. So be really gentle. Take a nice bandage. Um, I get like the rolls of it and you wrap it around, um, not loosely, but I mean not super tight, just, just enough that it's got a little tension. And then you know those bendy hair clips? Mm -hmm. So I'll like use those to keep that in place. That's so I've got my idea. wig cap, right? It's, yeah. it's a whole thing, but it's worth it. Yeah, so you don't. So yeah, you have like a barrier, and I do. There are um, companies. I don't. I don't know what they are because I've never used them myself. But I have a friend who uses. It's like a, a silk or like a fabric, um, something with Velcro, and they'll use that as like a quick method. It's kind of the same thing, but basically just having a barrier between your hair and the wig will. I think protect a lot more. And then it's nice because the wig stays on a lot better because when you have your pins, you have something to slide into. Right. So especially if you have short hair, they do it like for guys with, with shorter hair, they do that a lot um, in movies and, or so I hear. But, um, but that's my trick, that works for me now and that's what I'm like currently. Yeah, that's a great idea, thank you. You're welcome, sorry it's such a long answer, but no, it's great. <laughs> I wanna give you all the information. <laughs> And sorry, you guys, I have a cough drop in my mouth right now. I'm fighting off a little bug, so um, I'm sorry for any, like, weird mouth sounds. I apologize. <laughs> any other questions? Anything, anything? Otherwise, I can just ramble. That's fine, too. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think. So I took questions on Instagram ahead of time, just in case uh, we wanted to have some questions. I also potentially was thinking about going live. Are you live? Oh, that's sweet. I've actually got, I've got a lot saved. We'll go through some of these. And then if we, if there's, are there more like from today's? My beautiful friend Shell is here, Life of Shell. She's incredible. My, my assistant, my husband's here, BJ. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can kind of just go through and um, like answer some of the common questions that I get and tell you guys a little bit about where I come from with a lot of this stuff. Um, and it kind of ranges, like some of it's very practical, like wig advice and stuff like that. Some of it is, you know, more kind of dealing with haters and inspiration and like all that kind of stuff being public on the internet. And I've been on the internet for 10 years, so <laughs> I've experienced a lot of different scenarios and things. Um, so uh, the first question that I got, and I got this a couple times, was like asking about my cosplay journey. Um, and I feel like I kind of covered that a little bit, um, but... It, and yeah, I really like the short answer for that. If you guys want to hear about that is that Sailor Moon, I think kind of 
took me from being obsessed with Halloween and costumes to being a cosplayer. Um, and then eventually I started doing uh, anime covers, like J-pop and J-rock covers at anime conventions and different like fandom conventions and started singing in Japanese. Um, and that was like my big thing. I loved it so much. I still do. Um, but that was kind of what I did at cons for a long time. And I would usually cosplay uh, when I would go to the cons as well. And so I feel like my cosplay journey, it's, it's gone all sorts of different directions, but um, essentially, you know, that's the gist of it. Um, but yeah, I figured I'd cover that just in case anyone wanted to know. Um, and I have some more, like, do you guys want to hear about, like, wig stuff? Do you guys, like, I mean, I don't know what your, like, cosplay forte is or what you're interested in learning about with cosplay, but I, I do have some, like, practical stuff if you want me to share that. Yeah, wig stuff? No, I actually have a question. <laughs> Do you have a question? So with your shoe journey, do you have like, like heels, it's a thing. Yes. So do you have a comfortable version of shoes that goes with outfits in case you've been on the con for three days? Kind of yes. Do you, that? <laughs> do you have brands that you have go-tos that have options? I have, so when I cosplay, um, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I, I have photo shoot cosplays. I have a music video shoot cosplays, and I have like convention cosplays. And so I, I'm like very, I wanna be comfortable, you know, especially if I'm like up here and I'm, you know, chatting with you, I don't wanna be dying in crazy heels or something. There's always usually one element of a costume where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is more than I expected. <laughs> and I'm trying to like make sure to keep myself all together, but um, the struggle is real. Um, but yeah, so either like if I'm at an event or something and I've got crazy heels and the costume requires it, I'll definitely bring like Ugg boots. And then before and after, you know, and you can do a quick switch um, if you get to go backstage or if you get to just go around a corner and just like relax for a little bit. I definitely do that. And when I have to like walk across a convention hall or something like that, I'd like bring some flip flops, something that fit in your bag. Um, that's definitely... Highly recommended, something I do all the time, like for events and shoots. But I'm, yeah, I tend to, I feel like at events I tend to wear shoes that I know I can walk in. Sometimes I get surprised and realize something's painful and I think it's fine. But <laughs> um, yeah, usually I kind of choose my costumes, including shoes, like for cons specifically. And today I'm wearing like crazy shoes, but they're really comfortable, oddly enough, because they're platform. So. <laughs> That's a good question, actually. I'm like, shoes are a huge, it's a huge thing. You don't think about it until you're walking miles in like spike heels and just dying. It's too much. <laughs> um, let me see if I've got any other like, or any other, just raise your hand like at any point if you guys have, here we go. Uh, what's the best way to approach like a person who's cos cosplaying? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a really good question because there's a lot of different things that happen. <laughs> um, I think like my personal favorite is just to, you know, get their attention, just say hi. And um, if you want a picture, just ask first is always the nice thing to do. Um, and just introduce yourself, you know, just be friendly and, you know, and you don't have to, you can tap me on the shoulder. I never mind if someone, I'm, I have a hearing loss. So a lot of times, and especially with big wigs, I feel so bad because I'll be walking by and someone will want to stop me, um, you know, to say hi or for a picture or whatever. And I don't hear them and I just keep walking. So luckily I got this guy over here who usually catches it, but um, that's a struggle for me. So a lot of times people will tap me on the shoulder and like, that's fine with me because that's the only way they'll probably get my attention sometimes in a loud uh, convention hall. But um, yeah, I think just being really friendly and just, you, oh, a little fly, cute. Um, just basically saying like, hey, like I like your costume. Would you mind if I took a picture, took a picture with you? And uh, some of the sort of negative experiences that I've had is, um, and, and generally like I'm a hugger. Like I will generally offer to hug people and usually I'll say like, is it okay? Can I give you a hug? Um, Always ask. <laughs> Always ask if you want to uh, hug anyone, obviously. Um, but I've had people just kind of like come in for a hug and I was, you know, a little uncomfortable just because it was very unexpected or just kind of like, what's happening? Um, one of, there's, I don't know why, but when I'm Ariel, 
in my, specifically my mermaid tail. Um, or I was, it happened once when I was Tinkerbell. Um, and usually, like, I, he's not always with me at these events. Sometimes I'm with a friend. Um, and, you know, it just kind of depends on who I'm with. If he's there, it doesn't happen as much. But people just want to pick me up. So, I don't know if it's because I'm short, I'm five foot one, five foot one and a half, but <laughs> because I'm short and like little, I think people are, and I'm not like that little, but I think people are just like, oh, I just want to hold a mermaid or, you know, and so I've, I've literally had people not ask, just come up to me and be like, they'll, they'll ask to take a picture. They'll be like, can I take your, you know, a picture with you? And I'm like, yeah, come on in. And then they'll walk in and just swoop me up and I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> And, you know, it's terrifying because you're like, this person could just walk away with me. I can't do anything about it. I work out now. I lift weights. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I've had, like, a lot of crazy scenarios happen. And luckily, like, I think it's only happened, like, three times with the picking up, which is crazy that random strangers have picked me up three times without asking. But it did happen. It was Comic-Con um, in L.A. or San Diego. There's a lot of people. Um, but, and I, I think there was like one other time when I was uh, Poison Ivy at San Diego Comic-Con and some guy like tried to kiss me in a photo. Like he asked to take a photo and he was standing next to me and he like leans in and I was like, no. <laughs> you know, and I basically was like, I'm Poison, watch out. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people just feel with cosplayers, I think you either get people who are like really shy and they're afraid to approach you, or you get people who kind of feel like you are a character and they don't really see you as a person so much inside the costume and they kind of want to, you know, I don't know, get whatever photo they want and stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of like interesting scenarios. Um, but I think the best way is just to like say, hey, you know, and just ask and um, you can't go wrong with just saying hello. And if anyone ever has a, like the only time I ever would say no is like, if I'm like on the phone maybe and I'm like having a hard time trying to find someone or if I'm late to something and I'm getting stopped all the time and I'm getting stressed out because I'm like, oh no, I don't want to let them down. But I will always say yes. If I possibly, possibly can, like I will always want to stop and take a picture because like it means so much, you know, if someone likes your costume, that means everything. So yeah, that's a super good question. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I actually have like a whole section I was writing up yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and literally, like, what's funny is um, I've been saving up to make my album. And so, with this costume specifically, I was like, ooh, let's see how, like, if I can put this together with like very little budget to almost no budget and just see what I can do. That's a challenge that I like to give myself sometimes because I'll spend a ton on like one costume and I'll save up forever and ever and ever. But, you know, you want to be able to cosplay multiple characters and do different things in a year. So, um, yeah, that's, like, a huge thing with me. So I'm trying to think of, like, I think, first of all, it does depend on the character. I think there are budget ways to do, you know, lots of different characters. But when I'm kind of on a budget, I will tend to look at characters that, are, that have, like, simpler designs, um, oftentimes things that you can purchase a piece of clothing that could work for a costume piece or something you could alter. Um, like this was literally just a t-shirt and I uh, cropped it. It was cropped, but I cropped it a little more. I sewed this, I like, cut the slit and sewed it and then I um, cut out the R and like bedazzled it and like had a good time with stuff I already had at home. But, um, but yeah, I feel like I tend to look for Characters, obviously characters I like. Um, that's always a requirement with me is, for the most part, like, I gotta cosplay someone. I really, like, love the character. Um, but trying to, f like, be strategic with what they're wearing and be realistic with my skill level. Because, um, again, I'm not a super great seamstress. Like, I break every sewing machine I have. I, he sews. My husband is learning to sew, and he's amazing. His first zipper was the cleanest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. So hopefully we'll collaborate soon. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, but yeah, so I definitely uh, will try to find a character that I can alter clothing or pieces. You can thrift. I think thrifting is a huge... Yeah, and like that's super big here, right? I love it. Um, we do it a lot in California as well. And so especially around Halloween, you can find really cool stuff. And now that everyone's doing like the KonMari 
closet clean out, there's like really good stuff in a lot of different thrift stores. So that would be another recommendation I would say is to just get pieces you can play with and um, work with. And that would kind of be a good starting point. And you can literally, if you're at a thrift store, you could put something together for like five bucks. You know, I actually bought a wedding dress the other day for my next music video. Um, and it was a wedding dress, so it was 30 bucks. But still, it was a full blown gown for 30 bucks. And most cosplays, like if you're gonna build the type of costumes that I like to wear, if you're gonna build them from the ground up and you're gonna like, you know, just go to town with a commission or making it yourself, you can spend thousands of dollars. It, it can get, you guys probably know, it can get painfully, painfully expensive. So um, thrifting is like an awesome way to get around that and get really cool stuff. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other like, the, uh, the other sort of thing I would say, and, and obviously this is to a niche group of cosplayers. Um, if you're just starting out, uh, it might not be an option that's available to you now, but it probably will um, in the future if you're consistent, is sponsorships. So that's my other sort of saving grace with cosplaying, and it's a huge, huge blessing because I'm, I'm an indie artist, like I'm a starving artist, and you know, we're like, I'm always struggling to get everything together for my music videos, and uh, I'm kind of like that person where it's like, if there's a will, there's a way, but um, I'm so grateful when I have either friends who are willing to help me, and like I can help them with like something I'm good at, like say bedazzling or something, and, or wigs or something like that, and then they can help me by making me like a cosplay, like a dress or something like that. So I do a lot of trades with friends. Um, and even just like a cosplay day, one of my favorite things to do, um, I used to do it a lot more often with my friends when I had more time, like more just leisure time. Uh, we would get together, we'd put on anime or some fun movie or something, Disney movie or something, and we would just do cosplay, like prep our cosplays, you know, and just, we called it a cosplay day, and we'd help each other, we'd work on our own stuff, we could teach each other new skills, um, and so that's another way is either like friend collaboration or, you know, potentially doing a sponsorship with a brand or a designer who wants to work with you um, as a trade. So, so that's what I do a lot is, um, like for wigs, there's a lot of awesome wig companies that are really like generous with cosplayers and they love getting photos of cosplayers in their wigs. And um, actually this is one, so I'm gonna be doing, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see a post go up uh, after this of me being like, hey, wig is fashion, thanks so much, my wig is awesome, you know? And I just, uh, I love working with brands like that because again, it's, it's such a blessing for me because a lot of times I can't afford to put the costume together the way I would want to and that opens up a door and then they get something great too. It's really valuable to them for all of us to be promoting um, these companies um, and whether it's a small company or a, a big company, there's, you can always ask. You know, that's the thing is I think over the years I've gotten kind of, um, brave, I guess, or I've just, I've lost all shame. <laughs> um, and I'm very open to just asking, you know, just asking. I'll just, if, if there's something I see from a brand and I'm like, and, I, and again, if I have the money I want to support, um, I love supporting brands and buying full price and doing it that way. Obviously, that's a great way to go if you can. If you're in a spot like me sometimes where it's you're on a budget and you're like trying to do something epic and you just need this last piece, um, I will reach out to a brand and I'll be like, hey, I love your stuff, you know, no pressure at all, but I was curious if you ever work with creators and here's my channel and this is the kind of thing I could do for you. I could either, you know, post some photos or I'm doing a music video and I can credit you in the music video or give you a shout out on my story. Um, I have an unboxing series, so uh, I open a lot of mail on my Instagram story and on my YouTube channel. Um, and that's just another way that I can thank them um, and just give them shout outs and stuff because as you cosplay, um, you meet people in the community and you know sometimes you start to grow following and not that it's all about that, but it's a huge blessing when um, that following can open up doors to work with brands and do that sort of thing. And eventually, it can lead to making money too, which is a really amazing thing. You know, when I started cosplaying, I had no idea that there was any way to, um, you know, make any sort of anything. I just did it for fun. We all do, right? We do it because we love it. But it's really cool that now, 
like Disney specifically, which is like my favorite brand, and a lot of brands are getting, I think in the beginning they were scared of us, <laughs> um, or they just didn't know what to make of us. They were like, what is this cosplay thing? I remember like way back in the day, I used to model for Hot Topic, <laughs> and I'm not even a model, but it's something that I do with music and stuff, but um, I'd be in there and they had no idea what cosplay was. And now, they're literally, they thought I was weird for like cosplaying, and now like they're selling all cosplay stuff, right? Um, but, uh, oh wait, I'm getting off my train of thought. Help. Hot Topic. Before Hot Topic, where was I? Something about brands. Wait, say again. Disney. Disney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Um, sick brain. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I think a lot of brands have embraced us now. And what's so cool to see is all different types of brands, like Sunday Riley did a big promotion earlier this year, which is like a skincare company, and just any type of brand that you can think of having to do with like beauty or fandoms, clothing, all sorts of stuff. Like there's a lot of opportunities um, to work with brands, and I love that they're so um, like stoked on cosplayers now, because I think for a long time, at least in my opinion, we were very, uh, very niche, and we were it just wasn't as widely known about and it was always cool to me but it wasn't cool to everybody but I think now it is and in my world it is but um but yeah so I I really love that brands are uh just embracing us now and and not just being like what what's happening what is this <laughs> so sorry I'm I'm a talker long answers but I hope that I hope that helped I'm trying to think if there's like any other uh if I wrote down anything else having to do with like financial and budget, um, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I covered. Oh, and then I, yeah, closet cosplay. The other thing I, I would say with budget is um, obviously like we, I don't know if you're like me, I have a problem getting rid of things. I've been trying to be better about that, but I'm so afraid I'm going to need it for a costume someday that a lot of clothing items and stuff and like weird hats or like anything, I just don't get rid of it and I just put it in a closet and, you know, pack it away. And so I think like closet cosplay is amazing and it's totally doable. And especially if you thrift and just kind of hold on to stuff as you find cool stuff. I think just digging through your closet and getting ideas is a great starting point for someone on a budget. Um, and I think too, like if you have, this is my opinion with cosplay. I personally, like I love an amazing costume. Um, obviously, <laughs> but I think makeup and wigs and sort of all of the details in cosplay are what, in my opinion, it's what makes me at least notice someone, what, what makes someone kind of stand out from the pack a little bit more. Um, because if you have this like epic costume, but you, you just, you know, don't really kind of commit to the makeup side of the character or commit to, you know, doing a wig or something. It's not that it's not awesome. It's still totally awesome. And be comfortable, be you, right? But I think it's really fun if you want to, like, fully commit, and especially if you're on a budget, I think, you know, and I've done costumes like this, too, where I just, like, went ham on my makeup. I watched YouTube tutorials, and I just, like, tried all sorts of new crazy stuff, and had this like crazy face of makeup and I love playing with like learning special effects makeup. That's like, I'm not like trained and I'm not uh, good at it per se, but it's really fun to play and experiment. And so I think like a, a really cool, unique makeup look um, and even without a wig, just cool makeup really like takes you to the next level. Um, and then, so yeah, so if you've got cool makeup and you've got cool hair or a cool wig, like you're already halfway there and you know, sometimes people won't even really notice the costume as much if you're just so like fun and crazy through here, you know, and really like um, representing the character. Um, and that's something on YouTube that I think really helped me um, way back in the day, it was like 10 years ago, I was one of the first, <laughs> I'm like OG YouTube guys, I was one of the first, um, <laughs> my hipster glasses on right now. Uh, I was one of the first Disney, um, I, I don't know what to call it, like singers who cover Disney music and not like as a parody. So back then when I started YouTube, most people, if they were singing Disney songs, they were like making fun of it or doing some like cheesy parody and not like taking it seriously. And, um, and I would kind of make videos in my living room, but I would do my hair like the character and do my makeup. And I, I was trying to sort of do it for kids to entertain kids, and um, I was like, well, if I'm singing part of your world, 
I might as well put my Ariel costume on because I have it because I cosplayed her at Anime Expo. Um, and sometimes I didn't even have a costume. I would just do my makeup like the character and wear like a t-shirt. And those videos still did super, super well. And it was just because someone somewhere, you know, thought that I embodied the character just, just here. And that's enough, you know? And so that's my opinion, but I'm a big advocate for details in costuming and, you know, down to like the jewelry and just having fun and really like going for it with your cosplay. So I think that's, I think that's all I had with like the budget side of it. Um, but yeah, and do what you can and like save up and eventually you'll get there. Like you will be able to, you know, if you're committed, you can do anything you want to do. If you save, you can get to that crazy ball gown or whatever you're wanting to make. But in the meantime, go through your closet, do some rad makeup, like take a dead wig, like bring it back to life and like have a ball, you know? And if you, your wig's like too dead, be a zombie version of that character and do epic zombie makeup and like everyone's gonna freak out, right? <laughs> so that's just me. <laughs> so. Mm. <laughs> yes. I feel like you're so much better at this than me, though. Like, I feel like you're so... I know. I, you're so good at this. She's so amazing, you guys. If you ever see her, just, like, watch her pose. Watch her move. Um, for me, it's, like, trial and error. So I take a... Especially in the beginning, still now... He could tell you, he's my photographer, my talented photographer, but more so my talented husband. But um, I take a lot of bad pictures. Like there's a lot of bad, very, very bad, bad angles, bad posing, bad everything, but I don't give up. And I just keep moving and experimenting and trying things. And I think that's, that's the mistake, I think, not mistake, but I mean, I think that's where some people might not get as cool of a photo as they want, um, and it's hard at a con. Like I, you know, when people ask me for a photo, I'm just like, hi, <laughs> you know, like it's hard for me in the moment to like go into a crazy stance or something a lot of times, um, but when I'm in photo shoots, that's when I really play, and I feel like I just try everything and think out of the box, like, and for me, I love trying to do poses that the character does, obviously. We all wanna try to like get there look down and so I'll pull up on Pinterest or Google or wherever um, you know inspiration images of the character and kind of do some like stuff for that for like the look alike but I think it's also really fun to just do your own thing and you know it can still be in the vein of the character's personality but um, just plain and like you know take it high fashion take it you know silly like um, your own interpretation of a character through posing is really fun. So that's my take on it. So that's what we do is we literally just go in our studio or we go out like on a location and I tend to like it really, like not a lot of people around because I get really shy about, because I still, I've been modeling in a weird way. I've been modeling for a living for like, I don't even know, since 2008, but I'm not a model, I'm a singer. But like people ask for it and it's a thing that's needed and I'm, I'm like, you know, it's not like traditional modeling, obviously, but um, cosplay and uh, clothing and brands and like that kind of stuff. But yeah, so I feel like my preferred though is just hiding somewhere where there's not a lot of people watching me. I feel really comfortable. Maybe I'll have a friend there or two who can help me um, get friends that inspire you like Shell. <laughs> And uh, just play, and that's and I just we just do all sorts of stuff, and there's a lot of bad stuff, and there's a lot of good stuff, and we always find cool poses and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's kind of how I approach it. <laughs> yes. Okay, so makeup question. Yeah. So you have this beautiful, like, big-eyed look going on right now. Thank and you. Like with the white underline. Yes. So, That's like my favorite thing to do, by the way, like especially with anime or like Disney characters. And But just in life, I'm always trying to get my eyes to look bigger. So I'm always like trying stuff. Um, but this is kind of, it's like the one I've settled on that's kind of tried and true for me. But I use, like the white is the NYX Milk uh, 
eye pencil. Have you seen it? It's, it's just, I think it's like a couple bucks at CVS or whatever. Yeah, it's super like budget friendly. But that one's like potent. So you also like, if you aren't doing a cosplay character, like sometimes you can look a little, you know. I mean, this like with normal clothes, it's still fun, but it's a lot. Yeah, so like I also, I'm out right now, but I also love to have a nude um, eye pencil, but it does the same thing. So if you waterline, um, tight line your under eye with white, your eyes will naturally look bigger. And if you do nude, it will still make them look bigger, but you're just a little less um, anime looking or cartoony looking, I think. Um, but I will say like, so what I do is I do my eyeshadow, or I do the, the liner first, I do my eyeshadow, I do like my eye look that I'm gonna do on the upper, and then down below, like a big key, I think for making it work and make you not look as like, oh. <laughs> I still feel like sometimes I'm like, oh, I have a lot of face on, the, on my face. Um, <laughs> but I take, uh, first I take like a, a little bit darker than my skin tone uh, eyeshadow and I kind of like, sometimes I'll create an extra line. So like I'll make, I'll go over my waterline onto my under eye and make it bigger. With the white. With the white, sorry, yes, with the white. And then I'll take like a, a, a brush and go right under the white line with like a skin tone or a little darker than skin tone shadow. Um, and that kind of like tricks you into thinking that your eyes bigger. And then I also will take like some dark shadow and kind of on the edge, like buff out the edge a little bit. Oh, hello. Um, and so I'm trying to think of, and I do like cat eye liner. And that's my other trick is like my eyes naturally, in, in my opinion, they're like a little too close together <laughs> for my, t I mean, they're fine, but for characters and for embodying, um, like specifically Disney princesses and stuff, I always am trying to open my eyes, but also like, like make them bigger this way too. So I always do like a pinup, like a really heavy pinup cat eye. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's like really intense until I get the lashes on there, especially today. Today I like went ham, um, cause she's a villain. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Um, but yeah, so that makes a huge difference for me too, is just really like widening and then opening. And so that's kind of my like favorite thing to, to do with eyes, so, I don't know, does that, yeah, it's very doable, and there's a lot of YouTube tutorials out there, I feel, I'm trying to remember her name, um, Snitchery, she's got, or I don't know if it's a tutorial, but she does that, like, wide-eyed look a lot, and she's amazing, and I watch her videos a lot, but, yeah, watch videos and get inspired, and, yeah, and I think I have, I have tutorial, yeah, my Ariel, I think, tutorial has that a little bit. And um, yeah, some of my tutorials show that too. So my Elsa one too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> of course. My pleasure. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody? Otherwise I can just, yeah. Uh, I think whenever I'm trying to cosplay, one of the biggest barriers for me is feeling like my costume um, or myself in my costume doesn't look quite right or doesn't look as good as everyone else's. Um, how do you, uh, do you have any advice for someone who's like, Afraid to cosplay. Yes. Oh my gosh. But see, this is how I feel. You know, like I, this is. I think the imposter syndrome is real. Like no matter. I think what for a lot of us. Like no matter what you're doing, especially if you're like stepping out of the box a little bit from your you know norm. I feel like I don't know. I feel like we all feel like that to an extent. I definitely feel like that every time I cosplay. Like even right now, I'm like. Oh, guys, <laughs> my hair, make sure it stays in place and like everything, you know, I definitely feel like that constantly. And I think the biggest thing is, I, I feel like, first of all, do what you love and get it to where you're happy with it. And if you're happy with it, that's all that matters. Because number one, like we're doing this because we love it, right? And we're, we're, I cosplay for me and I love when other people like it, but if I'm happy, nobody else's opinion matters. Maybe that's selfish or weird, but like that's how I am where I'm, but I'm also my hardest critic. So it's hard to make myself happy, but if I can get something to a point where I feel comfortable and I feel like, okay, you know, and I always think I could have done better or I know next time I can do A, B, and C and it'll turn out more like I want or whatever. But if I feel like, you know, I'm comfortable in this, I can walk around in this, I want to take pictures in this, I wanna test it out and like see how it photographs and see how it works, like just just go for it, you know? And if no one is gonna be thinking that for one thing, you know, nobody's gonna look at you and think, 
And if they do, they're not worth your time. Um, but I honestly just think cosplay is trial and error, and that's how we get better. And we're all, we all start somewhere, and we all started with probably like a really kind of rough cosplay. You know, most of us started with something that was um, fraying and, you know, like everything was, you know, topsy-turvy and, and it's still awesome and it's still great and it should still be celebrated. And so I think, you know, no matter what you're wearing, just do it and every single time you do it, you're going to get better and you're going to get more confident too because like the more you do it, the more I think, at least from my experience, the community in general is very like warm and kind and welcoming and anyone who's not can just whatever but the community is typically very like excited to see you cosplay in who whatever character they love you know and so they're always going to get excited so i don't know i feel like just do it just own it and if there's a mistake sometimes like just be like i'm meant to do it that way like because you know it, I don't know, whatever. Like, I, when I did my Harry Potter uh, crossplay, I had my shirt, like, my shirt was super, like, wrinkled. And I was like, oh, no, there's no iron. I don't have time to fix it. And I was like, wait, Harry's, you know, he's, like, fighting Voldemort. He's kind of a mess sometimes. Like, it's fine. It's part of the character, right? <laughs> so you just, like, create a story for why it is the way it is. And then if anyone says anything ever, which they won't, but you'll have an answer prepared and they'll be like, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> so that's my take. Just keep, just keep doing it. Don't let it stop you. You know, that's what I would definitely say too, is like, don't let any fear of um, doing something you love stop you. Just attack it because it's worth it. And when you get to the other side, you'll realize that it, you know, it's so worth it to be able to connect with everyone in this community. So, yeah. <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so we probably have time for like one or two more. Anybody has any? <laughs> yeah. Um, all of you have been cosplaying for a while. Of all of your cosplays, what are your top three? Mm, it's so hard. It's so hard. Okay. Um, well, I have to say Ariel because she's my favorite character in life. Like, she's just my favorite. Jodie Benson's my favorite. Um, she's kind of become my pseudo identity. She's not, I'm not Ariel, but like, you know, she's definitely kind of the character that opened a lot of doors for me and means the most to me in a very sentimental way because as a kid, that movie is what made, that's the song, Part of Your World, is what made me want to be a singer and voice actor. So it's kind of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing today, but like I never expected to actually be in A Mermaid Tale. But yeah, Ariel would obviously be in there, um... Uh, it's so, cause it's like, do I go with my favorite? So out of the ones I've done, Peter, what, what? Costumes. Costumes. Yeah. Ariel for sure. Mm, this is so hard. Belle. Um, I made this crazy, crazy gown with my friends and it's, it's insane. It's like covered in roses. It's literally like car a carpet, like a full, uh, it's just, it's a lot. You can look up the video if you want to see it, but <laughs> it weighs so much it like damaged, not damaged, but it gave me like some nice bruises on my hips. But um, Belle is my other favorite for sure. And then uh, it's so hard to pick, but I feel like the third would be like a tie between Peter Pan and Alice because those are my other two favorite characters. So I love anyone from Neverland actually. But, I, but as far as like cosplay and stuff, my favorite thing, like my favorite, favorite, favorite thing is trying someone new. Like I get the most excited for um, taking on a new character because my biggest, I think my biggest kind of passion with, I don't know, there's so many passions within the passion, but one of my biggest passions is like tr the challenge of taking on a new character and like seeing how far I can take it and seeing if I can embody them in some way, whether it's a photo or a video or whatever. Um, and like the more they don't look like me, the more fun it is usually like I do it's fun when you're a lookalike like it's fun when you can get really close but it's also super fun when you're doing something that's polar opposite from what you look like because that's what cosplay is about right it's about transformation and living this fantasy life for a day of being a character you love you know so like villains and I just get like I have so many dream cosplays and like right now like Maleficent is one and I look nothing like her but 
I want the challenge. I'm ready. And not like the, not the new Maleficent. That's amazing, by the way. Go see the movie. It's so good. Um, but like classic, like animated Maleficent. That probably will be my favorite. If it turns out the way I want, I'm going to work on it for the next like couple years. But um, yeah, I love a challenge. So that's my favorite thing. It's something new. <laughs> Okay, I think we're probably at our time, but thank you guys so much for coming. You make me feel so special. I'm so excited you came. <laughs> and I'll come down and we can chit chat if you want to. Feel free to ask me any other questions. Uh, we'll probably head outside.